It is Connect Radio. This is The Breakfast Show, morning and welcome. And it's always a treat on a Wednesday because we get to chat to our friends at Compassion UK, but not just Tim. Now, usually we have Tim on and occasionally we have other people on. And that's exactly what we've done this morning because we're very excited to welcome to the show Paul and Linda. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Gareth. Morning. So just tell us a little bit about your story, because it says here that you've been involved with compassion for ages. <laughs> How long's ages? Uh, we first got involved, I think it was back in about 2007. Uh, we went to a conference and we heard all about compassion. Um, we just felt compelled to get involved. And I know it's probably a silly question, but there's so many charities out there. Why Compassion? What was it about them that really struck those heart chords with you? I think for us as a couple, it was the fact that it's child-centred and it's Christ-centred as well. And um, just seeing that every child has the opportunity to reach their full potential. And for those who will be able to see this later on, you've actually got a map behind you. Now, you seem to have basically um, sponsored off your own back. Most of the compassion children there, if that's the case. <laughs> so, Paul, um, the map behind you, presumably, there's photographs of the lovely children and there's arrows pointed of where they are in the world. Are they all the children that you both sponsor? And they are currently and those that have graduated also, because um, once they graduate, they remain part of our family and we pray for them every day. And um, their photographs are on our kitchen wall here to remind us that they're, that our family is with us. And you mentioned the phrase graduates then. So when they go from, I guess, being children to being adults, you keep in touch with them. Have you ever met any of them as adults? Uh, not as adults as such, but um, we've had the privilege of meeting two of our sponsored children, Cake in Thailand, she lives in Northern Thailand, and Violet in Uganda, uh, which was absolutely life-changing. That is one of the reasons we do what we do today. Kate in Thailand has graduated now and she's in the workplace. And um, uh, so she's earning her way in life and um, that cycle of poverty has been broken for her. And you still keep in touch with them, presumably. The choice, uh, we are given the choice by, by compassion. Would we like to remain in contact with the, uh, the sponsored child once they have graduated? But the final decision is down to the child. And we totally understand that if, uh, if a child, once they um, uh, go into the workplace, um, if, they, if they choose not to remain in uh, contact, then... Um, we respect that, but um, it is uh, it is an awesome privilege to have them as part of family. And it looks like from the pictures behind you, it must be a very, very big family. So the incredible thing is about this, that it is £32 a month and you are investing in the future of a child. Now, presumably, both of you know uh, how important this is because you've been doing it for a long time and you've got all these children there behind you. What would you say to those people who have maybe been listening to this every Wednesday for a while and they're thinking, well, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't? What would you say to them? I'd say just go for it. Um when we first started out, we thought maybe we can stretch to two children. Um, but then we found whenever you step out for God, he steps in. I don't know how the finance works each month, but it does. He provides and we are so, so blessed to have these children as part of our family. We perhaps at times think that we are a blessing, but they are more of a blessing to us. We are blessed to be a blessing. And I'm trying to count the children behind you. 
I think I've counted 12. Is that too many or too little? We currently sponsor 13. Wow. So <laughs> that that adds up, doesn't it? Every month, that's a lot of money going out of your bank account. So you clearly do feel so passionate about compassion. Please don't get us wrong. We're not minted. <laughs> we are not millionaires. We're just your average uh, family. But, you know, we have been blessed with three daughters uh, who are married. We have eight grandchildren. And we feel that we want to give something back. Every single child that is born into this world is uh, has the same potential uh, in there, in, inside them. And uh, they need a break to release that potential and see that potential grow and and for that child to flourish. And we believe that every child has that, mm -hmm. um, should have that opportunity. And through sponsorship with compassion, um, we have seen it um, firsthand. We've seen it in action. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what drives us forward. That's what gets us up in the morning. Um, and yeah, we we believe we totally believe it. And we would say to anybody who's on the fence, as Linda said, go for it. Um, that is definitely uh, being the headline of this interview. Don't get us wrong, we're not minted. Um, so we've just done the calculations there, and it's four hundred and sixteen pounds a month which you're investing into children around the world. And if you are listening to this right now and you're thinking, well, maybe we can't stretch to 13, but maybe we can stretch to one, yes. then what you need to do is to go to the website, CompassionUK.org, and click Sponsor a Child. And on there, you'll be able to see the many children who are still looking for sponsors. And I want to ask you both, so how do you select, or how did you select, unless you're planning on taking any more, the children that you sponsored? Was it something in the name? Was it the area? Um, when we first started out, we just picked two countries and decided we wanted girls. But since then, we've tried to spread the children we sponsor across the world. So sometimes we'll decide on a particular country and it may take us several days scanning the website until a child jumps out at us. Um, more recently, we've sponsored perhaps more mature children who perhaps have had a sponsor um, and for whatever reason, they're not sponsored anymore. So we like to step in and just see those kids across the line. And is the plan to sponsor any more? You're on 13. Could we go for the 15, do you think? Round it off nicely. Or maybe even the 16, actually. <laughs> well, the thing is, some of these are teenagers, and we realise in the in the, in the the not-too-distant future, uh, some of these children will be graduate, graduating. We don't call them children. They're young people. <laughs> um, but they will be graduating. And uh, as one graduates, um, uh, we don't pull back we uh we choose another child um and and we just um we 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 consider it together and um we we just feel led to a, a, a an individual it's difficult to put a uh to explain it but um um we just feel that um we're led to that individual mm. And the final few questions, you said that when one graduates, you take on another one. So that means that you've currently got 13, but since 2007, you will have had more. So have you got an overall total of the children that you've sponsored since 2007? Uh, I think there's 16. To wow. be honest, when we first started out, you see, they were a lot of them were much younger. Um, I mean, our youngest are triplets in Kenya. Wow. Um, and they're they're still quite young they're only eight at the moment we've had them since they were four but they're identical so they are difficult to tell apart from the photographs and um, because they're young they write quite comical letters uh, and that's the beauty of sponsorship you get to keep in contact with the children as well 
How many people will have walked into your house and thought that you've just printed out the same photo three times <laughs> and put it in the same area and gone, look, we're sponsoring three children. <laughs> they are triplets. <laughs> um, so incredible. I mean, I guess it can't be many people who on Compassion's books, if you want to call it that, who have actually sponsored that many children and have got 13 children that they're supporting at the moment. So I think we should... Uh, get back in touch with Tim. There should be some sort of uh, certificate coming your way, surely. You know, it's uh, it's not about numbers, and we don't consider the numbers. It's about the one, and every single one of those is special to us. Uh, we don't really, uh, we choose not to uh, talk about numbers um, yeah. because every single one of them, um, like Joshua, Goner, and Teddy, the triplets. They we write to them individually. We don't write to them as, as brothers. We write to them as uh, as individuals, and that's how we treat every single one of those. Um, so it's not about us. It's all about um, stepping out uh, and allowing God to work in the lives of these young people and seeing them flourish. That's what gives us uh, enjoyment. Seeing them flourish. And it's all about that, because in this country, we take all these things for granted, don't we? We take healthcare for granted. I mean, education. It's a funny thing, isn't it? Because you've had your own children. And when they were smaller, there would have been occasions when you probably had to uh, bribe them to go to school. You probably had to drag them to go to school. But in other countries, education is, is something like, wow, I can actually go to school. Yeah, I think that for me, as a mum and a grandma, it's, it is so, so important seeing these children have that opportunity to go into school. And for some of these countries, especially in Africa, where perhaps the parents have to pay a fee, it means being sponsored, you get to go to school every day. You don't get sent home because your parents haven't paid. And as you say, Gareth, you know, these children, they count it a privilege to be able to go, to put on a uniform and step through the school gates each day. And as you say, we've got children in our country who perhaps don't always want to go. <laughs> and the same about healthcare as well. Do you know, we're in such a blessed position. Everybody listening to this right now in the UK, if you have a child that's poorly, you can take them to a doctor. I know we moan about the waiting list and stuff, but you know that if something, if there is an emergency, you call 999 or you take them up to the hospital and it's there, they'll see the experts. But think about the amount of children who haven't got that, the amount of adults as well around the world who haven't got that. So when you do invest in a child and you sponsor a child with compassion, you're giving them a future. You go to the website right now, CompassionUK.org, and maybe it's a name, maybe it's an area, maybe there's something about that child that sort of uh, gives you that quiver in your liver, if you want to call it that. And just before you go, I mean, I find it hard to believe that you are 70 here, Paul, but apparently you are doing a challenge which involves a lot of sevens and seventies. Tell us about that. Well, first of all, Gareth, I'm not 70 yet. I've got just over a week to go. <laughs> Are we still hanging on to it there? Is the injury still going? Not quite 70 yet. I've got so six on, days to go. On October the 8th, uh, I turned 70 and uh, I wanted to do something significant um, to mark that day. And um, something that we are, well, compassion is what we are passionate about. And we wanted to... Uh, I wanted to do something that would uh, help benefit the, the 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 charity, and so um, although I'm not an um, uh, uh, I'm not a um, fun runner, I I run to keep fit, and 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 I don't enjoy it, but I have to keep fit. So while I'm one of my runs, I uh, this thought came to me: Hey, I'm about to turn seventy. So why not run 70K on my 70th birthday and hope to raise £7,000 for Compassion? Uh, I put this to Compassion and they came up with an initiative in Togo 
um, an agroecological project um, that uh, would benefit uh, the majority of the children that are sponsored through our church, Soul Church in Norwich, um, where there's over 100 children in Togo uh, sponsored through people who attend Soul Church. Um, and this project would uh, enable the, 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 the people in that um, vicinity, in that community, to farm um, sustainably, um, it's a large project. It's it's uh, it's two hundred thousand pound, but already thirty five thousand has been raised by the local people, um, and they are almost there. The building has started. There's going to be um, um, uh, toilet blocks. There's going to be a solar powered borehole. Uh, there's going to be classrooms to teach the the people how to farm sustainably. And um, my small contribution will hopefully benefit those people in Togo. And this is what I'm aiming to do. So oh, you've even got the T-shirt as well. Uh, so, in fact, Paul, stand up again. So when people watch this back, so it is uh, the... Uh, Instagram that you need is Paul Coleman 1953. And if you search out Paul Coleman 1953 on Instagram, you'll be able to see the links to donate and you'll be able to presumably see the videos of your training. So I've got this right. You're doing 70K in a day. Yes. Yeah. He's so that is, that must be about 50 odd miles. No, that's not that far. There's 43.5. <laughs> 43.5 miles in a day. Yeah. And you're going to be running that, no offence, at 70 years, well, 70 years old. You aren't quite 70 yet, as we distinguished <laughs> earlier on. That is a heck of a journey. When I set myself a challenge, um, it wouldn't be a challenge if it was not something that I, I knew that I couldn't do in my own strength. Wow. No. So I've done couch to 5K <laughs> and I got to about 3K and then um, I ended up doing uh, 4K back to the couch. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> and I'm nearly 40. I could not run. I could not run genuinely. And I try to keep myself fairly fit. I reckon it's a push, if I had to, I could maybe do it, an absolute push, 10 miles, I reckon, in a day. Not that, that is some serious distance, Paul. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. I've never done anything like this before. And um, when I put it to my family, they all thought that I was crazy and... <laughs> um some suggested i should see a doctor um but, uh, you know um i'm confident that um you know the scripture that comes to me is i can do all things through christ who strengthens me and this is not about me wow could we not remarket it i'm just thinking of your feet here where you do 70k in 70 days <laughs> <laughs> Would that not help you both out? Because Linda <laughs> will be the one who'll be hearing all the, oh, my legs are so sore for probably three weeks after the run. I'm sure that Tim will uh, let you know how things go <laughs> and <laughs> keep you updated. <laughs> Genuinely, though, Paul, what an incredible challenge that is for a great charity. And the both of you, it's been a real inspiring chat because... You know, hearing how people are giving children a future is always a real blessing to have on the show. So if something that Paul and Linda have said has inspired you to probably not run that amount of distance, maybe it has, I don't know. Uh, maybe the challenge will be set and somebody who is uh, turning 80 next week will say, well, I'll tell you what, I'll do 80K in a day. Then Why not? <laughs> I would love there to be somebody listening now who turns 100 next week. If you go to the website, which is CompassionUK.org, and you can find out everything there and be praying for Paul, actually, because I know we joke about this kind of distance, but that is some serious going, that is. So bless you both. And thank you for all you're doing for Compassion. And we'll be praying for you, Paul, especially. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>